Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Android Q beta five was released to all supported devices. So it's available to all the supported devices under beta four and I'll leave a list here on the left. Now the first change has to do with the boot up sequence for the actual phone. You'll see it has a new dark theme. So just has the word Google, but the background is completely black. Now we've got the G and then powered by Android. So that's pretty nice. It boots up nice and fast. And the first change, this is very subtle, but the actual line thickness of the lock up here seems to be a little bit thinner. There's also a couple gesture marks down here. We'll talk more about gestures in just a moment. Let me go ahead and unlock the phone. Now, if we go into the notification drawer, you'll see there's more consistency with the new accent colors. So I've got a blue accent color selected and you'll see under mobile data, it's actually still accented. So everything has this nice blue accent color to it and you can see battery saver, all of these do. So it's just more consistent across the UI. And as you can see, here is the build number. And this build is QPP 5.190530.014. And that's on a pixel three XL. So that's the current build number for this device. Now, the next thing is in the notification drawer, there's different types of notifications. So we've got an old Navy one here and then silent notifications. There's dual sections and this has to do more with the digital health and well-being. So if I turn the display off, turn it back on. Now you'll see the notification is on the lock screen. I can take action on this here or unlock it, but things that are less important to me based on my usage will be under silent notifications. So you've got silent notifications down here now, and it's just something new. We can swipe that off, see our silent notification, say it's useful or not. And Google will adjust it based on that with on, on Android. So that's one of the major changes. Also, there's a slight change on the home screen here. If we tap on one of the folders, you'll see that it's actually a little bit lighter in its actual hue to the folder itself. So that's changed, nothing really major there. But as far as the gestures are concerned, we can turn the gestures off if you don't like them. I actually really like them, especially in this particular beta. But let's go into the settings here and I'll show you where you can adjust those. So if you go down to the bottom, go to system, and then under gestures, you now have the, the ability to turn it on or off. You always had that. So system navigation, if you don't like the gesture navigation, you can switch it to two button or three button, and that's fine. You can continue to use that. But with this new gesture animation, let's go home here with this new gesture animation, you'll see we've got a couple little marks in the corners. And those are to signify that we can open Google Assistant by swiping from either corner. So it opens it up. So that's a little bit new. Gestures seem a little bit more playful. So if I open this app and then I toss it away, you'll see there might be a little bit of a bug here and there, but if I go into this app, toss it away, it goes up and then back down into the icon. So up and back down into the icon. It's kind of nice and playful. Also, there's a little change. If I squeeze the device on one of the pixel phones, if I squeeze it ever so slightly, it says squeeze to talk and you'll see, we'll do that again. You'll see the more I squeeze it, it shows up down here. It's just a little bit different and then says squeeze to talk. So that's kind of nice. And I don't know that it's necessary, but it's there. Now, if you go into say the app store, you have a new little peek or slide over peek. If you put your finger here for a second, you can kind of peek into your little settings drawer here. So you can peek into that. It's fully gestural, but you can't just go like this. That's a back movement. You have to go into it, hold your finger here, and then it's kind of a peak movement. There we go. And you can peek into your settings there on the size. So that's kind of nice. Just something that's a little bit new. And then there's another thing when it comes to screen pinning, if you, if you used pinning before you can now pin again, but there's a gesture to get out of it. So if you tap here at the top, then go to pin, you'll see it says screen is pinned. This keeps it in view until you unpin it, swipe up and hold to unpin. So we swipe up, hold, you'll feel the phone actually give a little haptic feedback and then we can swipe it away. So if we don't do that little motion there, we go in here, we pin it again. We can't get out of it. If we swipe, we'll just scroll. But if we hold our finger here, we'll feel a haptic feedback again, and then we can get out. So it's kind of nice and you can turn that off or on. It's actually off by default. Now, if we go to notifications, we can slide over to the right here. There used to be a little icon to silence the notification that's now turned off by default. Now you can re-enable it by going into your settings, going to apps and notifications, then going to notifications 
and then scroll down to advanced. And now we have the ability to allow notification snoozing right here. We can turn that on. If we go back to our notification and slide over, we should have the ability, well, maybe it'll take a minute to come in, but we should have the ability to snooze that notification. So that brings it back. You can also now disable the app suggestions down here in the bottom. Before you could do that on previous betas, you can disable that again if you don't want those. So if you wanna disable this, we can go in here. You'll see under our home settings, if we go to suggestions, and for some reason it goes to the light theme, we have apps. We can turn off the app suggestions. So if we turn those off, it won't suggest them. I prefer to keep them on, but that's something that's a little bit new. There's a feature that's returned from earlier versions of this beta that now allow you to kind of force a dark theme into apps like Instagram that don't have it by default. So in order to do that, you need to have the dark theme enabled already on the Android Q beta then go into your settings and you need to make sure you have developer settings turned on. Then you go to system, go to advanced, go to developer options, and then you're gonna scroll down. It's gonna take you a little bit to find it. And you're looking for the section called hardware accelerated rendering, and you're looking for override force dark. So if we turn that on, and then go back home and open something like Instagram. And then we're on one of my posts here. You'll see that it's got a dark theme to it. So it looks really good. It's got a nice dark theme and you can override that for pretty much any app that doesn't already have dark mode, such as Instagram or anything else really. Twitter already has a dark mode, so it won't work in that specifically. And that's really it. Everything seems to be actually quite fast in this particular update. Scrolling is super smooth. Opening and closing apps is super smooth. And it seems to work much better, at least on beta five, than it did on beta four for me. So I'll let you know how it is in the next video, but let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see these videos as soon as they're released next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.